Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you day today on some of the uh, workflows that we use for uh, outputting passes and use Maya Composite to put them together, in particular the motion vectors. So let's get started. The reason we use motion vectors is because uh, you can sometimes shave some render time in your scene. For example, if this is my scene and it's rendering in five seconds almost because it doesn't have any motion blur on it. If I enable motion blur and this is the um, animation that requires to be on full and I just increased sorry, the steps a little bit and uh, for the time samples uh, let's go to 6 because I want to be a little bit smooth actually let's leave it to 3 so we're not increasing the render time dramatically and we render that scene so now we have the renders done and it's almost 1 minute so we jump dramatically just because we have motion blur on and this is a simple scene Imagine if you have a bigger scene that has lots of information here, your render time will increase dramatically. So that's why we need to use the motion uh, vectors. So I'm just going to disable back my uh, motion blur because I don't need it. And all I'm doing right now is I'm adding passes or I'm making sure that I have passes. And the passes that we want to use is the uh, motion vector 2D, which is by default goes to toxic and you're not going to have to modify to do anything in it, just enable it. One thing I just want to point out when I render that the motion vector 2D is a 32-bit floating so therefore what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be rendering this as an open EXR and if I go to my uh, frame buffer tab I'm making sure that I'm enabling the 32-bit frame buffer so let me render this one more time again very very fast five seconds and just because I want to see the pass and you'll see the pass depending on how do you render it it'll come out different and you will see that your first reaction is it didn't calculate correctly however I want to point out that this uh, the viewer that you're seeing right now is the IMF display is not showing you the 32 bit as you expect to so you want to make sure that when we go back to uh, my composite you will see this image will look differently so I'm rendered the images just five frames and once they're done I'm gonna launch my Maya composite and we start working there so let's create a new composite and I'm pressing my tilde key to bring my image importer and I'm just going to navigate to grab my dyno and just a quick tip here if I'm looking at uh, my image browser and I don't see the duration you can right click and choose one of the option tabs and now you can have the duration for example for me it's just five frames so bring that in now I have it in here the first thing when you do when you bring in uh, EXR files the options will show you under the channel viewer the option tab the channel viewer you will have the different passes that we will have embedded in the toxic file sorry the EXR file so for example this is the beauty and this is the motion vectors and you will see now the motion vectors has different colors than what you saw in the, uh, in the render view because this is a true viewer that will enable the 32-bit so I'm just gonna copy this paste it again I could have easily used the channel to output the pass to use the pass but just because I want to show you how it will work I just wanted to have them enabled here in this way again I'm gonna bring now a background so pressing the tilde key again to go into the pick list getting an image browser and this is just a simple background so for this one I'm gonna go being sure that I'm using the beauty for this one I'm um, will be using the motion vectors so we need just to put them all together so let's start by adding these two first so the first thing I'm gonna do is to add under the filtering I'm gonna add a blur node and I'm going to connect the output of the motion vector to the forward vector and the image to the input. Once I go to the enable the blur node itself, there is an option. And let's connect this to the output. In the blur node itself, there is an option that says vectors. And this is very important to use because I want to make sure that my vectors are working correctly. So I'm going to enable view vectors and now you'll see the arrows here let me scale them up a little bit and you'll see now the arrows are moving 
towards the movement of the animal. So if the animal is going to move his head from here to here and arm down. So now we have it. The motion vectors are following the exact motion. And this is a very important when you're testing. You want to make sure that this is working correctly. So I don't need this anymore. I'm going to increase now my uh, blurness. So um, I'm going to link them both together, sort of the length and width, so I can have something that is going in both directions. And now we'll start seeing some motion blur. Right? So the first thing you can notice here, it happened very, very fast, and it happens on the fly. So you don't have to wait for the longest time to render your sequence, where you can do that right here. All right, so back again to the blur. One thing I want to make sure is that I want to increase that maximum radius, so I don't want to have that hard edge. And the best thing to explain this is when I add a background image. Uh, now I want to make sure, yeah, we're in frame two. Let's bring another node, which is the blend on comp. So this is going to go to the back, and this is going to go to the front. And this is the thing that I was telling you about here. If we look at it, you'll have that very hard edge here that obviously is not realistic, and we want to make sure that we get rid of that. So I can go to the blurness here, and I would say, okay, increase that radius maybe uh, to 2, or maybe a little bit bigger than that, 5. But you still, you will still have that harsh edge here. And that's why we need to do something or in other words, we need to create an alpha or to use the alpha that's coming from this image to enable us for that feathering. So I'm going to use a different node now, which is the uh, set alpha. So here's how I thought about it. The first, I need to use the alpha from this image to mask it and get it out from here. So I'm going to take the motion vector out. Let me break this. And I'm using the control and breaking the connection. So now we're starting again. I'm taking the motion vectors to be for the A point, And the dyno itself is going to be on the B. Once I do that, now I can use the alpha, because I have multiple options here. I can use alpha or luminous, but this one I want to use the alpha and I take it out and I feed it to the forward vectors in here and I'm going to use the same thing from the image to the input alright so we start to see that blur happening in here let's look at the comp so we see it but it needs a little bit feathering so therefore I can go back t to my blurness and now increase that radius let's say by 10 maybe 20 but by doing that I'm also uh, losing some definitions of the dyno itself for that I can lower my blur effect as in total so I increased my maximum radius so there I have more uh, feathering towards the out edge and I lowered the size itself of the length so when I go to my blend here the well, last thing I'm gonna do now is just go back to my uh, dyno image that I'm going from the beauty and uh, since uh, I don't want the actual beauty I just want the uh, original master beauty which is the first channel that's going to be in your uh, exe uh, XR file so I want to point it out for you guys just in case if you run into it if you want to go back for example if you flip from uh, beauty to toxic and you want to go back to beauty it will actually hold but if you go back to none it, as you see here it didn't change and that's because the channel group itself it should be for the RGB colors which is RGBA and colors and alpha and this will populate it so pretty much this is what I'm trying to tell you right now is a good a quick tip if you are flipping channels and I go to the top one and you can't you just channel it, change it from the channel group so if I go back to my blend on comp now you see it it's a better comp in here and it happens really really fast as you can see pretty much instantaneously. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this session and I'm looking forward to talk to you more.